but this one is actually a roll and write and it actually looks like quite a lot of fun. And as you might expect, the goal in this game is to draw your own map, but each player is going to have their own set of private objectives that they're going for. And this is going to dictate which sort of features you want in certain configurations. And if you're able to meet those requirements at the end of the game, then you're going to be earning those victory points and hopefully winning the game. But at the very least, you'll have a really cool map. The way this game works is that two dice are going to be rolled each and every round and players are each going to be simultaneously choosing one of those dice to select a region in this circle here with each of those regions having a selection of different features. And then you're going to be using the other dice's value to put into the circle on one of those features. The value you put there essentially means how many times you're going to be drawing that feature out on your map according to its placement rules. This image has a completed map, but of course when you start this is going to be completely empty and any spaces that are empty out on your map are considered unexplored. And in order to explore them, you're going to be wanting to draw your large features out on the map. And the large features are the mountains and forests, and whenever you draw them, you're going to be drawing them along the lines of the grid. An alternative way that you can explore more areas of your map is by drawing out the long features, and these are coastlines, rivers, and roads that are going to be drawn through the rows and columns of the map. But once you've drawn out a portion of your map, you'll then be able to assign dice to the various action spaces that allow you to draw these small features. And these are going to be things like houses, streams, lakes, and islands. And you're going to be drawing these anywhere that you have already explored out in your grid. There's also different locations that will let you draw labels out on the map, allowing you to name the various features and locations. But then there's also an action location that allows you to draw various landmarks and this one is a bit of a special one because each landmark is unique in the game and it can be different castles, outposts, ruins, and ships and each of these is going to be associated with their own card. When you perform this action the value doesn't allow you to draw multiple of these instead you're always going to be drawing one but it must be in the row or column matching the value that you assign to that space. Each of these cards will have their own effects and placement rules that you'll have to follow, and they could also score you additional victory points at the end of the game. And finally, the last thing you can draw out on your map are the events which are drawn any time that doubles are rolled, and each of the cards are going to be associated with a particular value, and each of these events will have their own effects on your map, and also their own placement rules, just like how the landmarks work. These are going to be all sorts of different features and creatures that will add more variety to your map and possibly a little bit of danger. The game continues like this until you roll two dice that you're no longer able to do anything with because you've occupied all those action possibilities. And then your game's going to come to an end and you're going to be adding up your victory points from the map that you drew and the various quests that you're trying to complete. And then the player with the most victory points wins. And if you're interested to check this one out, it does sound really cool. And you can find a link to it in the description down below.